I've got an important question for you. I want you to raise your hands if you're a guy and, wait up, and the first time you heard of the term affirmative consent, you felt angry or annoyed or frustrated. Now, you've probably got your hand up just like I did, because after all, really what is this but another example of us removing women's responsibility <laughs> And, and, and placing all on a man's shoulders, especially around sex. It is this, this way of trying to force people to behave a certain way because we're not really teaching our young women to stand up for themselves. It is frustrating and it's annoying. But I've had a few experiences over the last year or two of my life that have caused me to think maybe, just maybe, there is a massive silver lining to this whole affirmative cons consent thing. Not just affirmative consent, but the where society might go once affirmative consent becomes normal and we take things further and further and further along this line of thinking. What could that silver lining be and why do I think that maybe this could be a really amazing thing for guys? Keep watching to find out. Right now, I'd better start by saying this. I am definitely not a feminist. I am very, very interested in men's rights. I'm a very big follower of men's rights. However, that being said, I also don't fit firmly into the red pill or the MGTOW camps because I find them both to be a little extremist. Although I believe that there is a problem in our society as it exists for both men and women. And so I find myself being relatively moderate where I don't really like, especially the modern feminist stuff, and I certainly don't like the really extreme men's rights stuff. I sit somewhere in the middle trying to listen to both camps and find out what my truth is. Because I think, as with most things, the, the best solution lies somewhere in the middle between the two. So the first really interesting experience that I had was when I went and lived in Ubud in Bali for six months. And I did this a few years ago. And if you don't know what Ubud is, um, it is a place in Bali up in the mountains, around surrounded by mountains and rice fields, where a lot of Westerners go because it's a spiritual center. And they go there to work on their yoga, to work on self-development, to work on their sensuality, their sense of self. It's kind of a real hippie self-development hotspot in the world. And people just go there and they, and they work online and they work on themselves. And what's interesting about Abud is that it is a, is, is, tends to be a predominantly female hotspot. So the women outnumber the guys there. And the other thing that makes it really interesting is that the guys that tend to go are less sexually aggressive men. And so when you go there, the the vibe that you have is one much that is much more matriarchal. And I don't use the terms matriarchy and patriarchy in the way that feminists would, with one being evil and one being good. This is just the different models of society. And the reason why it's a little bit like this is that, first of all, there's more women than men. And so the women, if, if guys behave in any way aggressively or sexually forcefully or anything like this women will it'll spread through like amongst all the women and that guy will be he'll be social toast right he'll be in trouble socially because women will know all of them will know and so the guys they they don't behave badly now we can debate what badly is but let's just say women get to dictate the terms of how men behave there and what's interesting, what I found was that when this was the case, there is a lot of sex to go around. There is a lot more sexual promiscuity there initiated by women than I've seen anywhere else in the world. And I've lo I found this interesting when I was living there, but it, it wasn't such a surprise when I thought about sort of what we understand anth anthropologically about human history. So when we look at older human cultures, any cultures that were matriarchal, in other words, that women had a much higher status in society, you, they tended to be a lot more sexually promiscuous. They were like even less pair bonding. You certainly didn't have, you know, men having like harems and stuff. You had a lot, but you had more promiscuity. You had a lot more sex outside of marriage, outside of like extra pair coupling, right? So basically there's a lot more sex to go around in matriarchal societies. And when you get patriarchal societies, the more extremely patriarchal they tend to become, the less sex there is for most men. Because you get harem style societies where the men at the top get all the women and the men down below get barely anything. And we see this both in the written historical record as well as the genetic historical record when we look at cultures that still today, we've got tiny cultures around the world that are more matriarchal and how they behave. And then we can look at the genetics and we can see that, yeah, there tends to be a lot more genetic variances, a lot more sex going around rather than just one guy. 
Now there's a lot of debate about what causes this. Um, I'll, I can go into this in another video, but it tends to be about how much war there is. The more war there is, the more you need males to be in charge, and the less war, the safer things are, the more women can be in charge. But anyway, we've seen this pattern already when women seem to have more sway in how men behave. They tend to have more say in that. And so I left Ubud and I came back to regular society again. And I, I learned one thing about myself. I learned that I like intellectual hippies. So I like hippies that are open-minded. Uh, you'd be amazed how many hippies aren't really open-minded. They're actually quite closed-minded and think that money's evil and all this stuff. I like hippies who don't think money's evil, but are still really chill and open-minded and like learning new things. These are my people, actually. And so I start to hang a lot around a lot more of the hippie, poly, open relating communities here in Australia. And I had some really interesting experiences too. See, what's a big cornerstone of a lot of these communities is, is being a lot more open sexually, a lot more communication, and a lot more consent and respect is given between men and women. And, and, and a lot of times this can be viewed as men being too soft and more girly and more feminine, and that doesn't have to be the case. There's certainly some masculine guys in this community. But what I see a lot of, and I've had some interesting conversations, which I'll share with you in a second. In fact, I want to share one in particular. That basically, when women are feeling like they have control over their sexual expression, there's a hell of a lot more sex to go around. So I, I had a uh, conversation which kind of highlights this really well with a friend of mine. She's, she's a woman who, as far as I know, she's never really had many feminist conversations, any of this stuff. This is not coming from a feminist mindset. But she went to a workshop. She was talking about how she went to this whole event, this big hippie event. One of the workshops she went to was one where you were practicing saying no. One where you were practicing saying no. Each gender was practicing it. And the other gender was practicing telling another person how much they respected that person holding their space. And so she went to this, this event where um, the men and women would pair up and they'd, they'd say and do different things, say feelings, say desires, say wants. And the other person would practice saying, no, this doesn't feel comfortable to me. And the other person would practice saying, you know what, I really respect you saying no. And so this would be a part of the whole practice. And what she was saying is that when she walked away from this event, she hung out with a couple of the guys from this event. And, you know, one of them said to her that, you know, he really liked her. Uh, and that, uh, you know, he, he wanted to hang out with her one-on-one -on -one for the rest of the evening, you know, that he was sexually interested in her. And having just done this course, she said to him, she felt the freedom, like comfortable to say to him, hey, I like you and I'm sexually interested in you, but I don't want anything to happen tonight. I just want things to remain uh, non-sexual for, for the evening for myself. And he said, you know what? I really, really respect that. That's exactly how things are going to remain tonight, I promise you. And the second that happened, what she felt she was explaining was that she felt turned on. She felt aroused because not only had she been felt safe to express what she wanted, but she felt that that was respected. And that safety and that, that respect made her feel aroused in that moment. And as the night wore on, she realized she wanted to do things with him physically. And the funny thing is he wouldn't let her and that made her want him more. No surprise. And then, you know, I think they, I believe they, they may have hooked up later on, but that's irrelevant to the story is that this arousal was created through an extreme form of consent and respect for that consent request. And the more I've looked for these examples, the more that I see them. And I think that affirmative consent could be a great step in this direction. Now, why is this? Why is this going on? Well, I see in society, at least the society we live in, Western society, there is a bit of a battle of attrition going on. Meaning, not all men, but a lot of men, are enough men, are very uh, sexually aggressive. So you have men pushing and pushing harder and harder for sex, and you have women building up walls, bigger and bigger walls, to defend themselves against these aggressive, assertive men. Right, and and so the more assertive men and aggressive get men get, the more defenses women need to put up around them. Right, so the more like resting bitch face, and the more um, you know emotional blocks, and the more all this kind of stuff has to be erected. And so you just get this battle of attrition happening. And you know it, it is hard in countries where men are the most aggressive, other countries where it's hardest to have sex. <laughs> Basically, that that's how it works. And it's really interesting that I think that. Um, affirmative consent could be the beginning to de-escalating this process a little bit. And I believe that this has its roots in female hormones as well, because you may not realize this, but cortisol, which is a stress hormone, reduces a woman's arousal very ra rapidly. So when women feel any degree of stress, her arousal, generally speaking, drops. 
For men, it, it, it peaks a little bit until stress levels get too high. There are experiments, famous experiments on this, but basically when a woman's stress levels get too high, her arousal drops significantly. And when her, her, her stress levels drop dramatically, her arousal rates increase dramatically. Now, this is of course, well, of course, you may not have known this, but this is why foreplay is so important for women, because foreplay is about creating safety and sensuality and things that are soft and nice and relaxing her. You know, things like massages and all this kind of stuff relax her, make her feel safe, and that increases and heightens her arousal. Well, likewise, when women feel like they're in control of their, not just in control of their sexual um, behaviors, but also that their sexual decisions will be respected, like very respected, all of a sudden her arousal can peak because her perceived safety increases as well. And that's, I'm seeing this, and I'm seeing it everywhere that I look. So I've talked to quite a few women now who have had experiences like this. Um, the best ones, I haven't, I've purposely not chosen women who are very feminist because I feel like there is a a bias there, but women who are just involved in the hippie community at large have had a lot of com uh, conversations with them because they've had exposure to extreme forms of, of consent and respect for that consent. And I get the same thing over and over again. Yes, this makes me feel really aroused. The more safe I feel, the more accepted I feel, the, the more I, I feel like I want to have lots of promiscuous sex. And so, guys, I think there really could be a silver lining here. I think that affirmative consent has its bonuses. I think there's a lot more than at first blush, than at first glance, we think that there could be. I'd love to know what you think about this. I'd love to know if this has made your head turn a little bit, or your brain start to click over, that maybe there's more. And you know, I'm making this video in, in the same note, I'm saying this isn't definitely the case. You know, I'm not saying men just have to respect women, I'm just saying, think about it, think about it. Maybe there is something in it for you. Maybe a found of consent will work in your favor and get you a lot more of what you really want at the end of the day. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And definitely don't forget to check out some of my other videos which I've listed on the side here. As always, take care, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in my future videos.